Last week on our knowledge segment on how things work, Bertie Kello showcased the inner workings of the ferries at the coast. Tonight, she shows you never-seen-before footage of the port of Mombasa while revealing just how it works. Here now is how things work. Dawn at the port of Mombasa. A city of metal, steel, and moving cranes. Thousands of containers and ships, that's the order of the day and night. From tankers to cargo ships, imports to exports. 19 is the number of ships that this port can handle at any time. Your car or television set probably passed through this harbor. Ever wondered how the port works? Tonight, we'll tell you how on how things work. A day at the port starts early morning. We arrive just in time for one of the most important meetings, the daily port planning meeting. Sierra. The message Sierra will be on the 17th August. This goes on for at least an hour. It is here that ship agents notify the Kenya Port Authority of incoming ships at the port for scheduling in the coming days. It is also here that the Kenya Port Authority officials plan on how they will distribute equipment or manpower when it comes to offloading the ships. After planning has been done, um, we await the arrival of the vessel. Um, the moment the vessel arrives, um, they will notify it. Uh, on this particular day, we were waiting for a tanker. Her name, Alpine Aqualina. She had been in the high seas for a month, and it was just hours until she ventured into the Indian Ocean and finally rest at the port of Mombasa. The port of Mombasa is a compulsory pilotage port. This means that once a foreign ship is about to make an entry into the Kenyan Channel, it is only a Kenyan pilot who can take over the marine vessel and navigate it through the channel to the port. I'll inform the port control to call the vessel and advise the vessel to proceed to three miles from this entrance port. So after reaching there, she will stop and just drift when for the pilot. So I'll, I'll take our pilot boat here and sail out to board the vessel. From there, I'll board the vessel, then I'll assist the uh, captain to bring the vessel to the port. After briefing me on the voyage, he makes final calculations and the marine control tower alerts us it's time to leave. We board the pilot boat for a 45-minute cruise to the deep sea. minutes of turbulent waves we sported her the alpine aqualina in all its glory stretching out to 243 meters with 11 meters of her body underwater her presence couldn't be ignored the final communication was made between the Kenyan captain and the alpine's captain Okay, please speak. Then it was time for him to go take over the tanker. Once on board the ship, uh, he will interact with the master of the vessel, and then the master of the vessel will hand over command to uh, a KPA pilot. So the KPA pilot then takes command of the vessel and then navigates it safely into uh, the entrance channel up to the planned bath. A bath uh, is essentially an area where a ship is received for it to be offloaded and loaded with cargo. After an hour of gliding on the deep waters, the tanker was now close to the port. When it is being brought to the bath, she, the ship will be assisted by tugboats, which will ensure that safe movement and cleaning of the vessel uh, alongside the berth. At the berth, different ships take different periods when it comes to offloading. 
This is the process that most sheep go through before they get to the port. When the ship is on its berth, the port officials now begin offloading. Different ships are offloaded differently. The Alpine Aqualina, which is a tanker, is connected to pipes in which different products are channeled to various destinations. For this other ship, the JPO Sagittarius, the process is different. It has been two weeks since the floating of cargo began. The containers are offloaded by these huge gantry cranes that are able to lift up to 40 tons of weight. The crane goes on top of the ship, which is on water, and locks on the container, lifting it up and then bringing it on land. The operators have to be keen and extra careful as one container has goods worth millions of shillings. It will be loaded onto our terminal tractors, which will then transfer the cargo to our storage area. This offloading can take up to three weeks. At the storage area, containers, containers, and more containers. They are kept here waiting for clearance by the owners. The next time you see the containers, they are on the highways, ferrying the goods that have globetrotted for many days and nights. And that is what happens at the port. Betty Kialo, how things work.